So once you've perfected the spider at all different tempos with different starting notes, there's a more advanced version called the snake. I'd like to show it to you. This too has different start notes, but I'm going to show it to you from middle C. <laughs> twice as fast. Feel free to start those on an E or a G and you can also add the tongue. Always when adding the tongue Imitate the slurred air and use just a very small tongue strike and try to keep it in the same place according to register. Don't change the tongue position when you drop your jaw. Keep it in the same place. And Julie, how do I know when I'm ready to start doing snakes instead of spiders? Or do I do them both? Well, I always do the spider. I do them pretty much every day. The snakes I do for specialty practice. If I have pieces with large skips, for example. So when you feel that you've mastered the spider, when it's become easy and effortless, then you can feel free to move on to the snake. None of these exercises should be done with a struggle. You could even do the snake and end at an earlier point. Maybe only go out a fifth on either end and then you could even do it backwards and come back in. One of the beauties of the Carmine Caruso method, and particularly if you're studying with a Carmine Caruso teacher, is how that teacher can tailor make the exercises per student. And that was the genius of working with Carmine. He could tell from each student just what they needed. And each exercise was tailor-made and all handwritten in a very sweet scrawl. There's actually some of Carmine's writings online if you're so inclined to take a look. If you Google his name, you'll see some of the rough drafts of his exercises that he made up for you specifically at his lessons. What I'm attempting to do here today is make a composite. Make it one size fits most. But I tell you with good caution to work within your own limits and don't push too far or too hard. Otherwise you have that chance of manipulation and injury. So this video series is a good place to start learning these exercises, but you'd encourage anyone that has the opportunity to seek out a teacher of the Carmine Caruso method? Yes, and there are getting to be more and more, now that my students are out there in the professional world, very sadly, Lori Frank, who was a master Caruso teacher, passed away in July of 2013, and hence I'm inspired to put this on video so that it's available to more people. But at this point, many of my students, such as yourself, Alex, are becoming masters at the Caruso method. And the more you work with it and the more you learn it for yourself, because it's important if you want to teach this method to practice it yourself. It's not a method you can learn from a book or even going to one master class. It's something you need to practice daily in order to master it for yourself before you go out there and share it with anybody. So I want to set the record straight because I've heard of several teachers who just teach it because they came to a master class that I gave. And that is not okay. That's just not okay with me. Please learn it from the video. Try to find a teacher who has studied the Caruso method and practices it on a daily basis. And this guidance is important because if you don't have some kind of guidance and you're trying some of the more difficult exercises, maybe you could injure yourself. You could, and because of the injury possibility, I caution you to not force any of the exercises. And why is there injury possibility? There's extended technique used. There's no other exercise method that I know of where you don't take the mouthpiece off and where you breathe through your nose. This is very exclusive to the Caruso method. 
as I've stated many times, his reasoning was to stabilize the embouchure, so there was less chance of manipulation and fussing. However, it's unusual. It's not normal. So be very mindful and careful not to force anything into place. So these Caruso rules that you mentioned, keeping the mouthpiece on your lips, reading through the nose, those aren't things you would do when you play music? No. The only time I think I might consider a nose breath is in the third horn excerpt of Berlioz's Queen Mab Scherzo. <laughs> In the rest, after the high F, when you have to pick off a high B flat, first of all, I'd be subdividing like crazy. And I might actually leave that mouthpiece in place and breathe through my nose because the B flat's only a fourth away from the written F. So there's one place where you might consider the possibility. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the time when I play music, I breathe through my mouth and I take the mouthpiece off in between. So these are just exercises meant to make the game of playing music easier. And I'd like to make a few analogies that Carmine told me when I was his student. Do you know how basketball players run up and down steps to get ready for the game? Or baseball players swing three bats before they play? Or is it football players that run through tires? Not a football fan, but I believe that's the case. Never would they do tires in a game or run up steps for a basketball game, nor would a baseball player use three bats. So these are extended techniques to make their games easier. There's another great analogy from a very popular movie called The Karate Kid. Do you remember Mr. Miyagi teaching Daniel-san wax on and wax off with the car polishing? I do. It's exactly the same as the Caruso method, or even the way he painted fences and how that then related to some of the karate posturing. Same philosophy for the Caruso method. Practice the exercises in this manner and your music making will be so much easier and so much more fun. That's really inspiring. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome.